Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Go Geo. So today we are checking out coarse grained igneous rocks called pegmatites. And what's so special about pegmatites are that it's not just coarse grained as your typical granite, but it's actually really coarse in the sense that it has, it has really large crystals that you can find. So those of you that want to do mineral collecting and um, want to do crystal hunting, pegmatites are something you definitely want to know about. And it's also known for being pretty irregular. So these pockets of big, large crystals uh, and the minerals are dispersed in a way that's not typical of just a plain old granite. So let's take a look. All right, so I'm just walking around in these hills in Arizona today. So it's pretty warm, it's nice, it's winter, but I got a nice day. Today I'm gonna take you along so we can check out actual pegmatites. All right, so seeing a lot of large chunks of minerals. Here's some uh, hopefully you can see this. Let's see if I can get a little, there we go. There's a lot of feldspar in here. There's a lot of this mineral, which is mica. So yeah, lots of that in here. Let's keep coming up and see what we can find. There we go. Lots of mica. Try not to run into a cactus. There's a very large black crystal there. There we go. Yeah, if you can see that one right there. There we go. Okay. So some of the main minerals you'll find in pegmatites, depending on the type of pegmatite, depending on its parent rock, include the lighter minerals, which would be obviously quartz. Hopefully that's obvious to you, especially since these are associated with granites often. Um, so you'll find quartz. You will find a lot also of this mineral which is uh, also contributes to the lighter tone. And this is a feldspar. Both main types of feldspars could be found in pegmatites. And as I said, then also, let me get a piece here, mica. So here you can see mica there. This is muscovite. Um, but if you find the darker type, then you have biotite. And there are some other varieties of mica that might be common in pegmatites. And then you'll have the darker minerals, and those are primarily amphiboles and pyroxenes, as well as the darker uh, biotite as well. So yeah, you can find things like hornblende, sometimes algite, and diopside. So you can see some beautiful black crystals in this piece from this one. Pigmatites also have some other interesting minerals and in that's part of what makes them so great. Obviously the large crystals is a big part of it for the crystal hunters, but people that are also looking for uh, very valuable uh, or useful minerals also look for pegmatites and that is because they can be a source of things like lithium, rare earths, and a lot of other really useful minerals in industry. Um, in terms of other crystal hunting, tourmaline is fairly common in pegmatites as well as a bunch of other minerals that I'll talk about. So remember how I was describing these as having very large mineral crystals? Well, check this out. This is a piece with um, muscovite mica. And if you can see how large that is, pretty cool. So there's three main types of pegmatites you might come across, and one of those is the classic granite pegmatite, and that's going to have similar mineral constituents that you find in granites, such as quartz and feldspars, and then of course whatever darker mineral constituents are included, like biotite or hornblende, sometimes pyroxenes as well. Another one is a nepheline cyanite pegmatite, and that has a parent source of a cyanite. Now that means that it's going to be a lot lower in silica content, higher in feldspar, and also higher in nepheline. That's why it's a nepheline cyanite pegmatite. That's also what gives it that greasy luster. 
And finally, there are gabbroic pegmatites, which will be more rich in the darker minerals. You might find a lot more horn blend in those. There's even something you might call a horn blend pegmatite or, or something along those lines in the name. And those will be really rich in the mineral horn blend. This wall is full of what looks to be horn blend, the darker mineral there. And it's a lot of feldspar. Um, and then in the area, there's quartz. So those are the primary minerals I'm seeing around here. I got my rock hound with me today. You helping out, bud? Good boy. And he's laying in a field of mica, pretty much here. There's mica everywhere here. And some pretty big chunks, too. Okay, now we're going to head to another interesting locality, and that's California, where there are some other great pegmatites to discover. So let's go. This would be a great place to go off looking, and that's because those eroding hills you see behind me are all made up of granites, being relatively large amounts of silica, which crystallize into granite masses or even granite crystals. A quartz crystals out of these Mesozoic granites have been known to be in a wide variety of smoky quartz to double terminated quartz or even just plain really big crystals. Now among the many interesting pegmatites to be found in California, the Stewart pegmatite offers some great looks at how pegmatites form and the different types of pegmatites you can find. Stewart pegmatite is located in San Diego County. It's best known as a source of lithium and gem quality minerals as well as rare phosphate minerals. The pegmatic dike is found enclosed within gabbroic material or rocks with a composition with stronger ferromagnesian content. The cavities in these granite pegmatites that contain these interesting crystals are known as myrolytic cavities. Now coarse grained igneous rocks like granites are known to form from the slow cooling of the magma body and that's what helps form larger grains or crystals. But in the case of pegmatites it's actually known that they cool relatively faster than the surrounding plutonic body. And this rapid growth rate of these huge quartz crystals in the myrolytic cavities in this pegmatite is exactly what the researchers Phelps, Lee, and Morton studied in their 2020 study of the Stewart pegmatite. Their research resulted in a fascinating in-depth look at pegmatite formation and resulted in this graphic that they created that I'm showing here, which shows different components of the specific pegmatite, but also displays something that is characteristic of most pegmatites, and that is zoning. Starting from the exterior and working our way in, the first zone we encounter is the border zone, and that consists of finer grained material, usually a lot of apolite. Moving inward, we then encounter the wall zone, which is a coarser and thicker zone that contains the common minerals like quartz, feldspars and micas and sometimes tourmaline, as well as some rarer minerals and garnets and beryl. Then we encounter the intermediate zone, a very coarse grained zone that is the site of some of those gigantic crystals. And then we encounter the interior of the pegmatite, which can include a core zone and those irregular branching myrolytic cavities. And here is where we can also encounter some very large crystals of the minerals quartz, perthite, and spotamine. Take, for instance, monster crystals like the one you see here, which is found in the Etta mine of the Black Hills of South Dakota, where crystals of spotamine can be up to 50 feet in length, or 15 meters, and weigh nearly 90 tons. Also sometimes associated with pegmatites is this inner growth of quartz and feldspar, which makes these interesting shapes, and it's referred to as graphic granite, and the shapes look kind of like cuneiform writing. Pegmatites form from the crystallization of the remaining liquid and gaseous portions of the magma melt, and that's a large reason why they tend to have those higher amounts of rare elements and minerals. So there you have it, pegmatites something you definitely want to know about if you'll be rock hounding, crystal hunting, or just trying to better understand geology, especially igneous geology. I'll be talking a lot more about pegmatites and all the minerals you saw here today, including micas, muscovites, the amphiboles, pyroxenes, quartz and feldspars, and a lot more. So check out my mineral series if you're wanting to learn more about minerals and crystals. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next adventure here at Let's Go Geo. Bye.